Hey y'all, Jessica from Pretty Prints and Paper. Today I have another dupe or dud video for you. If you've never heard of dupe or dud, it's inspired by beauty folks on YouTube where they compare a brand name item to a store brand item. I've done a couple of these with like Statler's and Artist Loft pens and the Tombow brush markers and the Artist Loft version to see, you know, whether you need to invest in the expensive brand name item or if you can get away with using the quote unquote drugstore item. Today um, I have these brush markers. If you've ever seen Zig Kiritaki, um, they do a lot of different brush pens, but some of my favorites from them are like Zig Brushables, and they also have these clean color real brush pens that are an actual hair tip. And I just saw these when I was checking out at Michael's and I saw them in the back wall and I was like, what? So of course I had to grab a pack. They come in a 12 pack and they were $40 for the 12 pack. But of course, if you use a coupon, you can save anywhere between 30 to 40% off. Whereas the Kiritaki Zig version online is about $48 for the 12 pack and very rarely do I find that I can use coupons on them. Um, when I went to buy them from a local art store, I bought them for about $3 each. If you're from Minnesota, you can go to St. Paul and go to Wet Paint, and they have those there as well. There's very few places that sell Kiritaki in the States, uh, unless they're little boutique shops. So I wanted to see if they would live up to the hype. So I'm gonna do a comparison video for you, as, as well as some tips and tricks about using these particular brush pens. When I was a beginner, I could not use these to save my life. They are really, really flexible because they don't have that felt tip, brush tip, they have the real hair on the ends, and that makes it much more difficult to manage if you're not familiar with um, your muscle memory and things like that. So I'm gonna try and give you some tips as we go, as well as give you a comparison. So. I kind of matched some of the clean color Zig pens that I have with the Artist Loft version just to have a stand side by side comparison. Um, I didn't really have a teal, so we'll go with that. Um, honestly, they look almost exactly the same, which is alarming, but I don't know if you can see. Here's the Artist Loft one, and here's the Kiritaki Zig one. The lids are exactly the same with the notch and everything. So I'm kind of curious if it's like cereal where they, they just pour all the cereal into the brand name and uh, store brand name bags. I don't know. But even when I open them up, the body is even the same. The tips are almost exactly the same. The Artist Loft ones are a touch longer. But again, these are real, real tips. And so they split at the end like real hair. They're not held together like felt tips. Okay, so probably the drawing experience is the same when you use them. So the Zig, and with these, um, with Tombows, I tell people to keep their pen at a 45 degree angle from the paper on the, on the table. But with these, since they are real hair tips, you can keep the angle up and you can get those smaller hairline upstrokes as well with these. Be very, very light. They can go from tiny, tiny to really thick downstrokes depending on how heavy you push, right? So with Tombows and stuff, you can kind of get a sense of what the consistent thickness of the downstrokes are, whereas this, you can get a whole range of downstroke sizes, which is what makes it hard for me to use. I still struggle to use these. So that's the Zig. And this is Artist Law. push down really hard on this one. Okay, so you can still see kind of similar. You can see that you can get these kinds of downstrokes to really thick downstrokes, and you can get really, really tiny, fine hairline upstrokes. If you've had coffee like me, that's gonna be a struggle. So keeping that in mind, they both write about the same. So again, it's like you can bend them all the way 
or not. I think they're both water-based. And I don't know about the, the light fastness, which means that if light is shining on a work for a long time, whether the color will stay. I don't know about that, so I wish I could tell you. So that's that purple. Looks about the same. The cool thing about these kinds of brush markers is that sometimes you can get that dry effect, which is a cool texture to get other than what you might see with just the consistent smooth full look of other brush pens. So this is the Artist Loft. Honestly, the writing experience is really similar. So you can kind of see when the the brush splays out, you can get that cool textured look. And with these, to keep the upstrokes thin, I like to write almost straight up, which I never do with other brush pens. And since they splay out quite a bit, a trick that I learned from Paul Antonio on Instagram, he's from, I think, London, and he's brilliant, he drags and twists the tip across to kind of pull the tip together at the top. Um, if you're curious, I am using um, HP Premium Choice paper. It's the 32 pound weight laser jet paper that I got on Amazon for like 10 bucks for 500 sheets. And it's really smooth. I love using it. So smooth paper for other brush pens. These ones it matters less because they don't fray, um, but it helps the fraying of other brush pens. And on the back, the ghosting, minimal and the ghosting between the two different types of markers is the same you know i really can't tell the difference between which one i'm using because not only are their bodies the same but the tips are basically the same i don't really know how to tell the difference for y'all um, which means that I think it would be a really nice uh, bet that you can just get these with your 40% off coupon at Michael's. And um, long term, I'm not sure. So we'll find out. But at first glance, this is really, really nice. Um, a really much more cheap alternative and more accessible alternative if you have a Michael's near you versus going online and getting the, the Kiritaki Zig or trying to find a boutique that sells it. This might be a nice choice. The color range is nice uh, compared to, if you've seen the Artist Loft watercolor, like Tombow version of their brush pens, they don't even have a purple, but with this pack, you do get quite a range of colors. So you do get like the pinks and the purples, and then um, you don't get a teal, but you do get some nice light blue, greens, things like that. I don't know if they have a 24 pack, I haven't seen that, but I have seen this. I saw it at the front, near the checkout, kind of in the back where you kind of have to ask for help, but it's near there. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you, friends. It doesn't really ghost. It doesn't, they write the same. The tips are the same. You can get that dry brush effect. You can get the smooth variation of the line, really, really thin hairlines. Again, if you're not, if you, if you haven't had a lot of practice, maybe skip this until you have more um, familiarity with the fundamentals because this is a tricky brush to use if you've ever used like um, the hair brushes on like a kiritaki zig luna wink of stella pen those are also bristles and and really really uh, difficult to manage if you're just getting started so i would recommend going to the other artist loft brush pens the the tombow like ones first getting used to that or using like the pentel sign brush pen, which I've used in other videos first, and then get into this once you have more control of the upstrokes and the downstrokes, because otherwise this is going to frustrate the hell out of you. Um, if you have questions or if you've tried these before, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about your experience with them, if you've seen them or not. If you have other questions that I haven't gotten to, let me know. Um, if you like this video, go ahead, thumbs up, share, whatever. Um, I just hope that you enjoy it. I will see you next time. Bye.